Welcome to the Steady Hand Year End Review 2023. I'm Tom Bradley, co-founder and chair of the firm. I'm joined by Lori Norman, investor specialist and senior partner, and Salman Ahmed, our chief investment officer. Today, we're gonna to update you on the firm. We're gonna review our funds, what happened in 2023 and how they're positioned for 2024, and give you a sample of the advice that we give to our clients. So let me get started with the update. Every year, you can be assured that we'll do two things. We'll bring your fees down by virtue of our fee reduction program, and we'll work hard to improve our service to you. As we grow, we're investing in our business so that we can continue to be accessible at any time. And I can tell you, our client service team takes great pride in being the antithesis of the big, slow, impersonal mega firms that try and put obstacles between you and a live person. Our team now totals 20, of which four are in Toronto with the addition of Samantha Warshawski, an associate investor specialist. Many of the improvements were behind the scenes, systems and process improvements that allowed us to meet our ever increasing regulatory requirements, to be able to answer questions promptly and effectively that you might have and do things like get tax slips out in a timely manner. And importantly, these enhancements allowed our team of investor specialists to do almost 2,000 client meetings last year, and it take many thousands of phone calls. Now, there were some visible improvements last year. We launched two programs, the Retirement Withdrawal Plan, which helps retirees draw steady income from their portfolio and one I'm particularly excited about, the first home savings account, which is just a great product for aspiring homeowners, combines the best features of an RSP and a TFSA. We finished 2023 talking internally and in our writing about how challenging it was the last few years for an investor to stay steady, to keep focused on investing for the long term. There were more big surges and dips than usual often unexplainable and always unpredictable. Dips that not only led to some negative short-term returns, but also took the shine off the long-term returns. It was noisier than usual with the headlines full of risks and concerns. The wars, of course, the rise and fall of inflation, the normalization of interest rates, the ever imminent recession, and the commercialization of artificial intelligence. And there's been no shortage of what Salman and I call bright, shiny objects, trends and products that catch investors' imagination and distract them from their long-term plan. Things like cannabis a few years ago, crypto, AI, and last year, high-yielding GICs and money market funds. Certainly, we're delighted. Our savings fund now yields close to 5%, and Lori's going to talk about that in a few minutes. It's been harder to stay on course in recent years, but there are always challenges. The biggest one's coming when people are most optimistic or most discouraged. And this reality has influenced how we designed our firm, the people we hired, and how we communicate. It's fair to say staying steady is in our DNA. It greets you when you come to our website. It's our name. So in that vein, let me finish with a few ways that we collaborate with you on staying steady. The main thing we do is have conversations around a plan. To stay on track, you gotta know where you're going. A plan that has a clear vision of what the money is for and when you'll need it. This determines what risk is to you, which is totally in individual. A retiree, for instance, may find a weak market challenging. For an investor who's building wealth, it's a godsend. A plan that sets out a long-term mix of asset types that you'll be investing in. We call it SAM, or Strategic Asset Mix. It's what your total portfolio revolves around, and I'm referring to not only your steady hand assets, but all your financial assets. A plan that's built on realistic expectations about how markets work. Your portfolio will go through those surges and dips I mentioned earlier. It's not a matter of if but when. Now to help you navigate your investment journey, 
I'll turn it over to my partners. First, Salman, to talk about our funds. Investors might be surprised to hear that 2023 was a good year for returns. Seti Hand's balanced client saw portfolios grow between 8 and 11% in the year. The Founders Fund gained 8.6%, while our growth-oriented Builders Fund gained 10.9%. These returns are all after fees, but many of you will have done better by virtue of our fee reductions. And these returns came despite all the troubling things happening around the world that Thomas referenced earlier. So how can it be that returns can be so strong when the future looks so bleak? Well, 2023 was a reminder that returns and headlines are not always correlated. Last year, in this update, we told you that markets were in the middle of going through a period of normalization. And it's this normalization that drove returns. For example, interest rates have risen from all-time lows in mid-2020, and the rise I know feels sharp, but rates today are more consistent with what they were in more normal times before the great financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. And that's because policymakers have been trying to push rates up to slow down inflation. And there is good news on that front because it seems to be working. Inflation is becoming far more manageable now. And in response to this good news, bonds rebounded in 2023. Overall, the Canadian bond index rose 6.3%. Your bond investments that you get through the steady hand income fund did better, rising by 7.4%. Stocks also reacted to a better than expected economic picture as a recession many were predicting has not materialized. The Canadian market gained 11.3%, while global stocks rose 19.6% in 2023. Tech stocks have now been the primary driver of market performance for the last two years. In 2022, they contributed to market declines. In 2023, however, tech stocks rebounded. This sector accounts for 9% of our domestic market in Canada, but over 22% of global markets, which explains why the latter did better in 2023. And you own a significant weight in tech stocks too, through both the Founders and Builders Fund, but you have more diversification, which is a key tenant of our investment philosophy. And this tenant helped your portfolios do better in 2022 when markets experienced sharp declines, but it hurt in 2023 when only seven companies, the so-called Magnificent Seven, accounted for over 40% of global market returns. Your portfolio standout performer this year was the Steady Hand Small Cap Fund. It had a strong year once again, rising 16.6% after fees, far outpacing the Canadian small cap market, which gained just 4.2%. It held electrical uh, transformers manufacturer, Hammond Power, engineering firm, SNC, and gas and EV charging station operator, Parkland. It is worth noting that the manager of the fund, Galibier, sold all three of these holdings through the year, which reflects another one of our investing principles. We're disciplined on price we're willing to pay. These three companies are great businesses, no doubt, but with the strong returns they experienced last year, our manager concluded that the stock price just overestimated the future prospects of the business. Generally speaking, we remain positive about the prospects of returns for the next five years. Now, that doesn't mean an absence of risks like a prolonged economic slowdown and worsening conflicts, not at all. But these risks are in plain sight today. And indeed, investors are accounting for them in what they're willing to pay for most stocks and bonds. Our estimate for bonds is that they will gain between 4 to 6% over the next five years, and for stocks, 7 to 9%. And these are on average per year over the next five years. And to be clear, we don't know the path to get there. These are averages, and investors should expect volatility in returns from year to year. These returns are also in line with historical averages and provide investors a return over inflation. So let's start with bonds or fixed income. Investors are earning more interest on their bonds today. Bonds are also better diversified for stocks than GICs, but the risk is that bond rates might not fall as fast as some are expecting them to. Stocks are more reasonably priced today when you look at them across the board, 
Investors' expectations are more reasonable for growth in earnings and what they're willing to pay for those earnings. But there are pockets of overexcitement. For example, AI has the opportunity to change our lives and already is. But our managers believe the euphoria around AI has resulted in stock prices getting ahead of themselves. So with this in mind, in our Founders Fund, we hold 33% in bonds, which is slightly below our target weight of 35%. And for context, this weight was as low as 25%, or 10% below our target when rates were at their all-time lows. But we've increased our weight in bonds to reflect the more normalized market we find ourselves in, just higher rates, higher coupons that we can collect. The Founders Fund weight in stocks hovers around our target, which is 60%. We've rebalanced this weight down from 65, which is where it started 2023. Our portfolios have little exposure to these overexcited areas of the market, so we're comfortable being at our target. And the balance is in cash. Most of this cash is in the steady hand savings fund, which yields between 4 to 5% after fees, comparable to many GICs out there. Bonds in your portfolio are positioned conservatively. The majority are issued by the federal and provincial governments, which are considered safer than those issued by individual companies. With stocks, the largest sector in balanced portfolios is industrials. And I want to be clear here, industrials are a very diversified group of companies. They include a waste management firm like Casella, Rail Giant, Canadian Pacific, and Hydrovac company, Badger Infrastructure. Earlier on, Tom mentioned how we collaborate with you to stay steady. When it comes to your portfolio, you're expecting us to be steady. And we do that through the three investing tenants I've highlighted today. First, we build diversified portfolios by investing in a variety of regions, sectors, and even types of uh, investments like stocks, bonds, and cash. We focus on the price we pay You've seen how our managers have sold holdings when prices get ahead of themselves. And we've stayed away from overheated areas in the past like crypto and cannabis. Third, we rebalance, which you've seen us do by trimming stocks and adding to bonds in 2023 as things became more normalized. These tenants are not new. In fact, they've driven the solid returns we've delivered for our clients over almost 17 years. In 2023, the spotlight was on interest rates and their impact on the investments and financial situations of both our clients and Canadians. Adapting to these higher interest rates and increased cost of living hasn't been easy, but some positives have emerged. Inflation is trending downwards. CPP, OAS, and most pensions have been inflation adjusted higher, and the TFSA contribution room for 2024 was increased to 7,000 from 6,500. Bond portfolios now yield meaningful income, and the normalization of interest rates has made GICs and money market funds, including our savings fund, more attractive offering an average interest of 4 to 5%. In the past year, many of you have prioritized reducing debt, using available funds to pay off credit cards, lines of credits, and making mortgage prepayments. Some of you have curtailed spending on non-essential items such as dining out, food delivery, and shopping. There's been a shift to more intentional saving for significant expenses like cars and home renovations, rather than relying on lines of credit. Several of you have also added to or established a cash reserve for emergency funds or as a strategy in retirement planning. We introduced a steady hand retirement withdrawal program last year to help retirees build a cash reserve and we provide ongoing advice around keeping that reserve well-funded. We've received great feedback that the program has eased some of the stress associated with ensuring a steady income from portfolios during market volatility. 
these higher interest rates have provided an excellent opportunity to finally earn returns on savings earmarked for upcoming short-term goals, such as purchasing a new home or planning a vacation in the next few years. And we recognize how tempting these higher savings and GIC teaser rates from banks and credit unions are, but we continue to emphasize that current savings yields shouldn't be confused with long-term investment returns. Markets rise and fall, and so do interest rates. A quick glance at our volatility meter shows that stocks consistently outperform bonds and bonds consistently outperform cash. We encourage you to stay focused on your financial goals and align your investments accordingly. Striking the right balance between cash, bonds, and stocks for both your short-term and long-term needs is an essential part of our relationship with you. And if you need assistance or a reassessment of your portfolio, please reach out to us. As we look ahead, it won't come as a surprise that our stance remains steady in both our advice and our approach to investments. Over the past five years, we've navigated through a pandemic a notable surge in inflation accompanied by this rapid increase in interest rates, multiple wars, and ongoing political instability. Yet, despite these challenges and all of the noise, stock markets have closed higher in four of the last five years. Without the luxury of a crystal ball to predict what 2024 will bring, our advice is to be well-prepared and concentrate on what you can control in your own personal financial situation. Building on Tom's earlier suggestions, I'll conclude with some additional guidance as we embark on this year. Long-term returns are the ones that ultimately matter, but short-term returns tend to attract more attention. As Tom said, we want our clients to get exceptionally good at remaining focused on their long-term plans despite the inevitable ups and downs. Ensure your investment strategy includes a well-rounded mix of companies across diverse regions and sectors, encompassing a variety of asset classes. If you're properly diversified, some holdings in your portfolio may move in opposite directions, some zig while others zag. Try to resist making significant financial decisions based on headlines or what your friends might be doing. Emotions and money usually don't mix well. Continue to focus on debt reduction by prioritizing the repayments of debts carrying interest rates of 6% or higher. Explore options such as consolidating debt and negotiating more favorable terms. Lastly, consider automating as many investment decisions as possible. Setting up automatic monthly contributions in your TFSA or RSP, for example, removes the temptation to time the market and eliminates emotional decision-making. We want to thank you for your continued confidence in choosing Steady Hand as your financial partner. Your numerous referrals introducing friends, family, and colleagues to us has been enormously appreciated. In 2023, an impressive 50% of our new clients came from existing client referrals, highlighting the significant role you play in spreading the steady hand message to more Canadians. To celebrate our growth last year, we've committed to plant 10 trees for every new client that is referred to us. This initiative is part of a three-year pledge, and in 2023, we successfully planted 2,000 trees. We'd love to surpass this achievement in coming years. Finally, our entire team, along with Tom, Salman, and myself, extends warm wishes for your good health and happiness in 2024. Thank you for allowing us to help you and your families achieve your financial goals. It's been a privilege to work with you.